this session I'm going to be sharing about some tips for facilitating technology integration because we all know that structure and routine is key for keeping things smooth and having a workflow. My slides can be found at christinepinto.com slash integration tips. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Christine Pinto. I'm a kindergarten teacher uh, in Arcadia Unified School District in California. I am the co-author of the Gaffer Littles book and I have recently joined forces with Innovating Play. So if you access my slides and you want a copy of my book, if you click on the book, it'll take you to Amazon to get my book. And if you want to learn more about Innovating Play and how I have expanded this past year, you can click on the blocks, okay? So, five tips. So this will probably be maybe five minutes, okay? So tip number one is to assign kids to devices. So my kids are now 101 with Chromebooks. I'm so blessed because I have a Chromebook cart that lives in my classroom. So I don't have to worry about like the whole having to share thing. But uh, it, it, I will just say it's nice for someone like me who's driving to school in the morning and be like, oh, you know what? We can actually do this activity instead on the Chromebook or I can just whip this up really quick at lunch and they can do it after recess, after lunch. So I, basically I can be spontaneous because I have a Chromebook card in my classroom. But anyway, I am like type A and like to label everything. The device, the cord, and the slot. Okay? And uh, it's, it, it's so worth it because the kids know which device to go to and to grab it out and which cord to plug it in. So it doesn't take an eternity for them to put their stuff away. Uh, they just, there's, there's a system to the madness. Uh, and this number goes along with their class number. So that's how I label the Chromebooks. However, there was a point in time when I was in my other district and we only had access to six iPads. And I shared the iPads with three other teachers, um, two of which who also use Google Apps. Okay, so instead of having the number, I had put a color on the iPad. And um, also, this is something that I'm thinking of right now, because I, I do enjoy using the iPad platform. I did get some iPads for my kids, and so what I've done to label those is the background of the of the iPad, I have put the number. So, like, iPad number one has the back, the background is one. So if you just kind of like turn it on, you can see which iPad that is, if you don't want to put a piece of tape on it. But anyway, so you can do it by color, you can do it by number. The pieces of tape back here just had the kids' names. So when I had iPads in the classroom, I did it during center rotation. So one rotation would be the kids come to me and they have an activity going on the iPad. They knew exactly what iPad to sit with because of the color that I had assigned them to. So in case the kids forgot, I had all the kids who belong to the green iPad, all the kids with the white iPad, etc. cetera. Um, and then the other pieces of tape were just the other classes who, were, who also used the iPads as well, okay? So the idea is to try to get the kids working on their, their task or their activity, getting started as soon as they can. So I have the Google Classroom icon pinned in the shelf of the Chromebook. And this is something that my district pushes out. So it's awesome because I don't have to go manually in there and you know, like right click and add it to the shelf. It just autom it, it disappears. However, there's a way to do it manually, but if you can talk to your tech director or something and be like, hey, can you push this out on the Chromebooks? They can do that. Uh, so, so the kids know, they turn on the Chromebook and they go to Google Classroom. We start in Google Classroom always, even if we're not using Google, Google tools. I'll touch a little bit more on that, I think in tip five. But over here, uh, when I was using the iPads, this is what my screen used to look like, where I had grouped all of the Google apps inside of its own folder, and then I put it in like the taskbar area. But if you don't have one of these part these on your iPad, then you can just have it on your home screen. So it's not like the kids have to scroll through all the apps to find their to find Google Classroom or to find what they need. It's centrally located, and they can access it faster. So. This is this has been super helpful with uh, desktop and Chromebook login. So I created login cards that correspond with the keyboard. Okay. So how this works is each row is labeled with a colored piece of tape, and then this is this is a login card, and the login card goes with the keyboard. So the kids know that if they need to find an L to look in the green row and to go to the L and click on and, and to push it. 
the next letter is going to be in the yellow row and they just have to match it. But the important thing to note with this is that I have a Chromebook and they are lowercase letters. So while we all like to use Comic Sans, especially with kindergarten, and we notice how funky A is, is funky A on the computer. And so when you have funky A on your password card, on your login card, it needs to have that funky A, okay? Uh, also, I think desktop computers, the keyboards are capital letters. So if you have a capital letters keyboard, you want your login cards to be in capital letters because that's what they're going to be looking for. It's also a nice little exercise, I guess, if you don't, that way to try to match the uppercase with the lowercase. But the idea is for them to be able to log in quickly. So my kids, I teach my kids how to log in on the second day of school. I take a group of six kids. I have one kid, I'm talking through the steps of what to click on to one student who, and the other kids are just huddled around that student. And as the kiddo's navigating on the computer, the kids are watching, then they go back and they go and log themselves in and then off they go to the next center and I get a new batch of kids. So I'm only working with about six kids at a time. No, I don't dare try to do all 26 kids at the same time trying to learn how to log in. But, um, so the login card has been helpful. Come October, I start in August, like in the middle of August. Come October, they don't even need some, uh, there's kids who come up to me and I say, don't forget to grab your login card and they don't need it anymore. So the, the more, access that they have to um, to using their devices, the quicker the navigation piece comes. Just a storage idea, I store them inside of a 30-day calendar chart. So the number again matches their Chromebook um, number as well. So they live inside of there and yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all the tips I have in regards to this. So I have a blog post about everything that I just said and the template and the steps to how to change it because I got my tape, this is washi tape from Staples and in case you go to Staples and you don't find the same colors or maybe you want some different colors, I, in my blog post I share how to adjust the colors so that you can have your own, you can create your own login cards. Okay, so step number four, Create a workflow. How are the kids gonna get their devices out? How are they gonna put it back? Ideally, if they have the same workflow with putting it, in, with, with grabbing it and putting it back, it's helpful. Uh, and it's like, you know, like any other structure or routine, when it's established and it's in place and they know it, they'll, they'll follow it and they'll also call each other out when they don't, when they don't follow through with the, with the right path. So the idea is I have another table that's right here. The kids will go around all the tables, will wait by the cart, they stand by the door, you don't go past the door, let one person in the cart at a time, you bear hug it to wherever you're gonna go sit down. And so that is the workflow. The nice thing when I have my rainbow carpet, I call a row and a group of six goes at a time. I was sharing yesterday that sometimes I will explain a task that they're gonna be doing when they come back in from recess. And so when they come back in from recess, they're gonna grab their devices so at, in that situation, I have like 26 kids lined up waiting to get their Chromebooks, but, the, but the, the line goes down, they get their devices quickly and they get started. So, uh, so it works either way. All right, so my last step for you is to have a consistent startup. And so for me, I have always used Google Classroom for our startup and they know, okay, I get my Chromebook, I turn it on, I log in, I click on the Google Classroom icon it opens up and I click on Kinder 1718. That's the name of our classroom title. They click on it. And then usually I have like the hashtag system that I stole that from Alice Keeler. Um, like hashtag 010, it's like hashtag 10, hashtag 010. This is the name of the assignment you're working on. Because if you have an assignment title and you type in like a bunch of words and they're not reading all those words yet, it's gonna be a lot, but they can identify what a hashtag symbol looks like and the numbers. So if you write the hashtag number on the board, they can refer to it. But also, right now I have the About tab screenshot here because frequently used websites can go in there. Instead of them having to scroll through Google Classroom to find it, you can post it in the About tab. So it doesn't have to be Google that you started out in. If, you're, if you like using Seesaw, have Seesaw be your frequent startup. But always start try to always start in the same app so the kids at least know where to get started. So when my kids are asking me for questions, it's not where do I go to find this again? No, like they should at least be in Google Classroom before I come over and help them with something. And if they're not, I usually encourage them to ask someone else who is listening. 
So, uh, so those are my five tips.